Dutchman that volunteered for the Waffen SS during the Second World War either fought in the Viking Division, the Dutch Volunteer Legion or the Landstorm. In this video we're gonna take a look at the combat history of the Dutch Volunteers in the Viking Division. Stay tuned! Welcome back on the channel and if you're new my name is Stefan, I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I'm hustling history for you and if you like that consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. On May 26th 1940, barely two weeks after the German conquest of the Netherlands, Standarte Westland was established and it was aimed to recruit Dutch men. A Standarte was the SS equivalent of a regiment consisted between 2000 and 3000 men and together with the Standartes of Germania and Nordland they would together form the Viking division. Originally the division was named Germania but this was confusing because there was already a regiment within the division named as such so therefore Hitler personally changed the name in December 1940 to Viking and Viking obviously refers to the Nordic character of the division. By the summer of 1941 when Operation Barbarossa kicked off the division consisted of 20,000 men most of them were German. 360 were Dutch 390 or 94 depends on which source you use were Norwegian, 260 Danes, one Swiss and one Swede. Later Finns also joined and 45 Flemish were also part of Westland according to historian Frank Sebrechts. However another historian Nico Wouters he stated that 500 to 800 Flemish were in the Viking division in the summer of 1941 both in the works of Rupert Butler and Jochen Berle and Robert Gerwarth, these aren't mentioned. Well, make of it what you want. I did make a video about Flemish volunteers in the Waffen SS, I put a link up here or here. In the weeks prior to the start of Operation Barbarossa, the division was transferred to the east. And they did take part in Operation Barbarossa, not on the 22nd but on the 29th when they advanced towards Lutsk or Luck and one volunteer wrote the following about this. We now pass through villages where Ukrainians and Volksdeutsche lived. Everywhere they had erected gates decorated with fur greenery, flowers and colored ribbons. Inscriptions as Herzlich Willkommen and H. Hitler were everywhere in between. On July 1st the Viking division entered Lemberg in Polish known as Lvov and in Ukrainian as Lviv. Lemberg has been the scene of carnage because when NKVD units retreated they massacred the political prisoners mostly Ukrainians and Polish in their cells on the most horrifying ways imaginable. One volunteer wrote about this. July 3rd 1941 we got a taste of the brutality of the Russians. In Lemberg hundreds of Ukrainian bodies had been horribly mutilated. I want to stop writing about these horrors. It makes me sick. The horrors of Lemberg remained well known within the ranks of the Viking division. In later years volunteers still wrote about these horrors most likely to justify their own acts of savagery. In and around Lemberg the Dutch volunteers of the Viking division saw their first action against the Red Army that was retreating. These were most likely pitched battles. It was also here that the first Dutch volunteer was killed in action. The next stop was the city of Tarnopol, now known as Ternopil. And on its way there, Regiment Westland lost its commander, Standartenführer Hilmar Werkeler. Now this provoked strong reactions amongst the volunteers and as a result of Werkeler's death, several Red Army POWs were killed. On July 4th, the men of the Westland, they entered Tarnopol and their bloody work would get a new dimension when they got in touch with the Jewish population. What happened there in Ternopil and also in Lemberg I will cover in a future episode because this episode focuses on the combat history and I will talk about the war crimes in a future video. At the town of Yus Yatchin they crossed the original Polish-Soviet border and now they were 
inside the real Soviet Union and morale was high among the volunteers. Everyone in the company wants to be the best and it's a real struggle to have the most Russians on their conscience. All Dutch people want an iron cross, we love that. They all want to come home with an award. Unforgettable as the first infantry regiment to cross the Russian border, it's a knack worthy of SS men. We as Dutch are proud to be able to participate. Soon the Dutch saw action against troops of the Red Army but defeated them and advanced further. A Viking went via Pruskorov to Uman where they fought in the encircling battle against the Red Army at the end of July. After this they went to Kiev or Kiev. When the Wehrmacht units relieved them there, they crossed the Dnieper and Dnieper-Petrovsk fell to the Germans mid-September. This for sure was not an easy job, as volunteer Henk Kistemaker wrote in his memoir. At the beginning of September we had to cross the Dnieper. This was certainly no fun. In the middle of the night we lay on a street near the river waiting for our turn to cross. The helmet also protected our heads from flying shrapnel, there were hundreds of them. The great artillery fire that aimed very well originated from the fact that the Russian artillery academy was located in Dnepropetrovsk. I know memoirs aren't the most reliable source. This statement is confirmed by other sources as well. In October the Viking division took part in the battle of Rostov and Mariupol was captured mid-October. Yet in November Rostov fell back in Soviet hands and the Germans had to retreat. Winter was now upon them and one volunteer wrote. The first cases of frostbite in early November. Supplies were also delayed. Due to shortages we had to withdraw. Our boys did not want to go back and many cried when the order was given. By this point the division had built up a fearful reputation with the enemy. The approach in winter however greatly reduced the division's strength. In the following summer the division took part in the drive to the Caucasus. Rostov fell and in September 1942 they reached the most eastern point of the Eastern Front. Malgobek. In November the division was renamed to the 5th SS Panzergrenadier Division. After the surrender of the 6th Army at Stalingrad early 1943 the division was driven back to the Donbass and fought defensive battles as they retreated through Ukraine. By February 1943 Standard and Nordland became a division of its own and Westland and Germania remained part of the Viking division. In October that year the division was reorganized and renamed to the 5th SS Panzer Division. Since many foreign volunteers were viewed with contempt by the Germans, this was some kind of recognition for the foreign volunteers. The division got new type of tanks. This switch turned out to be difficult. The changeover took place quite quickly and with insufficient resources and this had huge losses as a result. In November the division fought near Cherkasy and was encircled in January 1944. The Cherkasy breakout occurred the following month. By that time the division fought continuously on the Eastern Front and was therefore pulled back to Lublin in German occupied Poland to gain strength and regroup. New inexperienced and above all ill trained recruits had to beef up the ranks and as a result of this the division lost its elite status. In March 1944 they fought near Kowel in western Ukraine and they continued to fight on the westward retreating front. At the end of 1944 they were transferred to Hungary to relieve the besieged capital of Budapest. They lost 8,000 men and had to retreat. Despite being ordered to defend the city of Stuhlweizenberg till the end the commander Karl Ulrich decided to retreat and take part in Operation Spring Awakening which resulted in failure. Despite this the remnants of the division escaped Soviet captivity and surrendered to the Americans in Fürstenfeld, Austria. The Viking divisions fought many battles on the Eastern Front and in some cases played a decisive role. Many Iron Crosses for bravery were awarded, a total number of 54. Only the Das Reich Division had a higher number. Viking also fought till the end. In conclusion they can be considered as one of the most effective units of the Axis. By stating that the Viking Division was an effective unit, I do not state that these men were heroes. They were not 
and I distanced myself from those who claim that because these men committed war crimes. I'll talk about that in a future video. Second, do notice that a portion of this division was Dutch. So therefore, we need to take a look at a unit that was fully Dutch. And I'm talking about the Dutch Volunteer Legion. I'll talk about that in a future video. Thanks to my patrons, you see on screen, and a special thanks to Joan, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rock Park, RL, and Colin Castleman. And if you want to check out other videos about Dutch volunteers in the Waffen SS, you can click right here. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like, to comment, to share. See you later.